Welcome back to Yashwala's Book Club. The book we are reviewing today is 10% Happier by Dan Harris. How I tamed the voice in my head, reduced stress without losing my edge and found self-help that actually works. A true story. Practicing meditation and mindfulness will make you at least 10% happier. The pursuit of happiness. This is the lie we usually tell ourselves the whole life. As soon as I get the new phone, as soon as I get married, as soon as I get my new house, as soon as I get my promotion, as soon as I get a million dollars, this is endless. And we say as soon as I get X, Y, Z, we will become happy. The pursuit of happiness becomes the source of our unhappiness. Most of us are never mindful of our present. We are either worried about the future or ruminating on our past. The problem is that this part of the brain was developed when we were constantly under threat. It constantly seeks out problems. Our ego is obsessed with the past and the future at the expense of our present. And this is what causes our ego to be impossible to satisfy. The minute you feed your ego a new achievement, toy or compliment, the baseline for desire is reset and it starts looking for the next best thing. Many people live habitually as if the present moment is an obstacle and that they need to be overcoming it to live the next moment. Imagine living your whole life like that. That is continued stress. Science of Mindful Meditation It is a form of exercise for our brain. These sort of meditators deactivate the monkey mind. It can help create a new default mode. All you need to do is train your brain, sit for 5 minutes, focus on your breathing. If your thought wanders, turn the attention back to your breathing. It is not about quieting your mind. It is about the number of times you can bring the attention back to your breathing, which is the current moment. When you do this, it helps grow the gray matter in the areas associated for self-awareness and in fact it shrinks the areas of stress. Soon meditation will be a no-brainer, just like brushing our teeth. In the 1950s, if you were going out for a run, people would ask you who is chasing you. However, right now it has become a norm because which studies have proven that it's very effective to stay or live a healthy life. In the not so distant future, if you complain about being unhappy, first thing they'll ask you, why aren't you meditating? Mindfulness meditation will help you turn on your problem solving mind when you want it and turn off, turn it off when you want to relax. It will create some space in your head so you can respond rather than react. The author has nicely put, striving is fine as long as it's tempered by the realiz realization that in an entropic universe, the final outcome is out of your control. If you don't waste your energy on variables you cannot influence, you can focus much more effectively on those you can. When you are wisely ambitious, you do everything you can to succeed, but you are not attached to the outcome. So that if you fail, you will be maximally resilient, able to get up, dust yourself off and get back into the fray. That to use a loaded term is enlightened self-interest. Everything in the world is ultimately unsatisfying and unreliable because it won't last. I mean, in cartoons, when the char characters slurp down some delicious food or drink, they smack their lips and seem totally sated. But in the real world, it doesn't work that way. Even if we were handed everything we wanted, would it really make us sustainably happy? It's neuroscience that would say that our capacity to multitask is virtually non-existent. Multitasking is a computer-derived term. We have one processor. We can't do it. I think that when I'm sitting at my desk feverishly doing 17 things at once, that I'm being clever and efficient, but you are saying I'm actually wasting my time? Yes. 
because when you are moving from this project to this project your mind flits back to the original project and it can't pick it up where it left off so it has to take a few steps back and then ramp up again and that's when the productivity is lost i think a great book on meditation for the newbies for the new generation like me and uh, i think this could be a starting point for anyone who wants to start meditating and has been thinking to do it that's it for today see you in the next one thank you